And now for the last screw. This has ever come off since day one. There we go. Hmm, easy to work on. It's got that specialty look to it, uh, where they didn't build a lot of these, and the ones they built uh, were done with a fair bit of care. And I can tell just by the way the leads are on all these components. Very nicely done. Very, uh, it's got a big whack of capacitors in it. Quite a few there. This is all I believe. This is all the tone, tone stuff. The rest of these I don't know offhand. With any luck, I can photograph that. Hey, look at this. Wow, that's just laying loose in there. Hmm. Uh, the big power supply filter. Where is it? There's the tube. Where's the big filter capacitor? Maybe here. Probably above here, yeah. There's a big, uh, low resistance, um, it's a 1, 2, that's a uh, 12, 1200, 1200 ohm high wattage resistor. So for sure this is the capacitor here. Just look at these guys. Uh, so I'm looking it over, Hang on, let's get the close up camera going and see if we can spot anything bad under here. Looks pretty darn good though. Then you can get a, a better look at the uh, style of engineering. I'll just start down here, okay, back of the fuse holder. And uh, what's that thing? That, that's actually a, that's a switch. Off and on. <laughs> well, that makes some sense. Okay, off on switch. Right to the fuse holder. Okay. Now, looks, I see a little bit of corrosion on this stuff. Maybe this guy has spent some time stored poorly. There's a high voltage effects on that capacitor, the way the dirt is dust on it. Now see how, see that wire, how it's bent nicely. See all the capacitor lead or resistor leads are all bent very nicely. I don't see anything but dust in here. There's that big resistor. Looks just fine. That's definitely the capacitor there. Looks like a one, two, three section capacitor. That's a resistor. Looks a little bit like a capacitor, doesn't it? 3K ohms. It's got the same, looks, you know, at a distance, it looks just like one of those other capacitors. Let's see here. Well, there's a big capacitor right there. That Now that's, you know, 500 working volts, so I don't know why they've got this, this capacitor here. Great big guy. Pretty close to this, it's coming, oh, wait a minute, that's a ground point. 
Now I don't know what's going on with this exactly. Hopefully we'll figure this out from the uh, schematic. That's kind of interesting how they done that resistor there. He's looking in pretty good shape. Why are these guys are filthy? One end of them. One end of them. I'm guessing has been picking is uh, picking up dust because of high voltage. Hey, where's this guy's dust? Maybe they got brushed off by accident. There's one part that doesn't match any of the rest. A hot dog. Why did they have a little hot dog in here? Everything else looks different. What's special about that? Yeah, something like a wire wound resistor or something weird like that. That's the microphone inputs there. There's another one of those hot dogs. Dog bone. That's a dog bone. Hey, this one. This one's fed like that. It looks like a hot dog on a skewer. That's not normally how you see dog bone. Dog bone resistors look more like this guy with the the leads kind of coming out part way in. Well, certainly not seeing anything too dramatic here, other than the uh, beards on those capacitors. So that's interesting. They have all these wires coming through here, and then on the other side, like they're all they just plug-in terminals. So there's some modularity to this thing. We could pop out, for instance, pop out the power supply. That's what we're looking at right now, right here. That's the rectifier tube. Pop it out, I guess, and pop another one in. Because, you know, with commercial equipment, uh, when it breaks down, it's a big problem for whatever the establishment is. School, business, whatever it is. They've got to get it fixed fast. So you can't have a repairman come in and do what I'm doing. He's got to come in and go, yeah, power supply, here's a new one. Get it in there and get out quick. So, that's it for the close-up. I really didn't find out anything stunning on that, which is kind of a good thing. But now I can get at these... Uh, oh, oh, let's just get that close-up going again here. I'll take an examination of the... Uh, of the... Okay, so hold still. So that's the back of the two speaker connections on the front. These, uh, these guys here, these two guys. So this is what's on the back. So right away, you see, look, they're just hooked in parallel. Nothing special about them. Uh, to, no left and right to this. It's just two outputs. And this goes over here. What's that? That's the lower level output. There's two of them there. That would go to, uh, you know, that really looks like a left channel, right channel arrangement, doesn't it? But this goes off to other devices as an output. So it's just taken off the speaker and padded down with these resistors. What a mess. A little vacuuming might help in here. So easy for me to clip on. Easy. I'll just clip on those wires and we're in business here. Where, where's that wire going? Oh, it's going right here. Hey, it's sneaking right out of it here. Oh, here it is at the back. Come along, come along. Hey, something in the back. What's in the back? That's another speaker connection, I think. Yeah, so they got a speaker connection out the back, too. So, no opportunity to clip on there. Okay, well, I think we've looked this thing over pretty good. I think it's time to get it going. I really do. So, the cartridge is going to work. What are the chances that a cartridge that old is going to work? Now, you know, maybe it's a high-quality cartridge. Uh, going with, you know, a very strong cartridge that can take the rigors of a public school or something like that. As opposed to the commercial ones, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the consumer ones, 
where everything is, you know, cheaper is better pretty much all the time. So, now I'm going to want to clip these on here and then turn this thing upright. So I don't want to clip in a way that when I turn it upright, I'm going to introduce a short. Love these new clip leads. Here we go. <laughs> Might as well put grease on your fingers and try to do this. Okay, that's no good. That's no good at all. Well, we're going to have to take a peek at these with a mirror before I actually operate it. So stick the speaker back here. Put these goodies aside. Okay, coming down. In fact, I can leave this front end hanging out. Wow, that is heavy. That is a heavy, heavy monster there. Let me check those clip leads now. Just looking up with the mirror. so I can just look up at the mirror here. <laughs> I think I can look up at the mirror. There they are. Looks okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should turn it on. So one of the things I want to do is turn the volume down. All of them. Two of them. Three of them. Power's off. Got to pull the cord out of that pipe. There we are. I'm doing this uh, as I do now, as a matter of routine, using an isolation transformer. So I shouldn't be too worried about getting a, a shock off the frame of this. Um, it's probably, it's, there's no reason to think this would have a live chassis. Something would have to be wrong with it for this to be live. So, and I know that because I can see the power transformer inside it. Inside the unit. Uh, well, I can't think of anything else to worry about here. So we'll put it on maximum current restriction. I heard it runs slow. So it must run. Famous last words. I'll unlock that. There's no real reason to do it, but I did. Because there's no mechanics behind this. Okay. Okay, so we have power to the cord now. Now it's time to turn this guy on. Here we go. Whoa, my light just came on really high. See it there? But you know, this thing draws a lot of current. It said so. so both lights are on. The lights on everywhere. The supply voltage is pretty low, 75% of line voltage, according to my meter here. So 75% of 120 is going to be 85 volts or something. That's probably a little low. Okay, so this bulb has brightened up again, so now the plate currents are uh, flowing. So I'm going to screw in my other restrictive bulb. Let me just give you a chance to watch this exciting moment here. So, let's see, can you see everything? You can see this meter, which is now at 50% of line voltage, so there's like 60 volts driving this. 
And you can also see this meter down here, this one, which is just laying at zero, but that's not zero. That's actually 100 volts. It's below 100 volts. It's slammed down on the left. So when I screw this other light in, this meter should jump up to like 85 percent, and this one may may show up. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Exciting stuff. Let's see my arm right in front of it. And this guy is really drawing the power. It's not much equipment I have in here that lights those two light bulbs like that. And now we're still only at 70 percent. Hmm. Well, let's give it a go at this point. We'll see what happens. And uh, if it doesn't operate, we'll just give it full power. Give it full power. Full power. Here we go. Hey, why isn't it spinning? Shouldn't it be spinning at this point? Turntable on off. Ah, so here, so this is the trick. This is the amplifier. Switch down here. And you don't have to look at those light bulbs anymore. And this turns on and off the turntable. So when I turn the turntable on, I'll bet you, I'll bet you my lights are going to go up a little bit higher. Here we go. No action. Nothing. Nothing happening there. Why is that? Why is there nothing happening? Yeah, if it runs slow, that is certainly slow. <laughs> Feels like the either wheel uh, traction is terrible on this. And not going, not going. How come? Is there some other switch I'm supposed to move or some kind of deal here? Well, we're going to have to give it more juice. More juice. Give it more juice. So we're going to flip it up to full power. I just read my take your watch off note. Take off my watch here. There we go. Full power. Oh, something started buzzing. Buzzing in the speaker now. <laughs> Let's turn on the turntable. I'm not getting anything out of it. Speakers, scratch filter, selector for mics. Wow, well if it's running slow, it's really running slow. So I think what we'll try and try and take this off. Okay, shut off the power. Power off. So we know the amp can produce some kind of sound, at least it produces a buzz. And I'm gonna guess if we take that screw out of there. Oh! Huh. Stop guessing, Jim, just lift it. Look at that. What's holding that in there? Either there's a locking pin missing underneath. Oh, more lights. Neon lights. Special neon lights. Two of them, too. Wow. Okay, so in this position we can see what's happening with the, uh, the motor and the idler. Nothing seems terribly wrong with it. Okay, power back on. Power back on. The turntable should be running. There's nothing. Nothing at all coming from that. What am I overlooking here? Good. It has a mechanism when you uh, switch it off, it disengages the idler. Which any relatively decent record player is going to do that. No hint of motion in this motor. Oh, I left the plug undone underneath. Okay, you can all stop screaming at <laughs> your. Stop screaming, everybody. Power off. Jenny forgot something. Power's off lid. Yeah, plug in the motor. It's usually helpful when you have most things plugged in. 
when you're trying to fix something here like this. That may explain a fair bit. Okay. <coughs> Motor's in. <laughs> ah, the excitement of finding out my own mistakes. Okay. Ready again, only this time we're going to start with restricted, restricted power again. Switch off, switch off. Restricted power on. Hey, can I just turn on the motor and not even turn on the, uh, the amplifier? Let's give it a go. Here we go. There it goes. Oh, and these lights came on. Well, it seems pretty good here. That's great. I don't even have to turn on all that amplifier and stuff. Hey, look underneath. And these are all the dots you're supposed to examine, lit by the flashing neon bulbs, to determine uh, speed. Nukem. Okay, Nukem. Nukem. Yeah, let's put this back in here. Okay, switch on. So let's walk a look at the uh, speed control here. So we're looking down into that. Oh, this may not work well on <laughs> the camera. Um, well, maybe. Yeah, the, the camera, the lower, well, let's see if I can stop those dots. Let's see, we're on speed uh, 78. Wow, this doesn't look like 78 at all. 78 is the big dots, the ones that are running, uh, one, two, three, four, the ones that are way out of control up there. Oops, the wrong control, speed control now. Just as I thought, this is really, really fine adjustment. So, I've stopped the upper dots, but it doesn't look right to me. I'd say it's going half speed. Can you see any of that? Not really. It's just not working on this camera, I'm afraid. Because the camera's frame rate is interfering with, uh, with, with really uh, seeing what I'm seeing. So, what I'm seeing is a set of dots that aren't moving now. But instead of it being black, 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 black dot with space in between, I see a light gray dot in between. So, and that does not look like 78 to me. So let's 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 go to 33. Uh, it just does not look anywhere near 33. We'll speed it up here. Let's see. That would be the second row of dots. Yeah, I'm seeing exactly the same thing here. Does that look like 33? I don't think so. That's incredibly slow. So it could be that maybe 45 is 33. And that's exactly what it is. Now I've got 33 set. The dots are clear, standing still. And that looks like 33 to me. So what's happening is the idler wheel is not engaging with the right part of the motor spindle when it moves up and down. It's it's out of alignment in some way. So that's a good situation. In fact, um, if you really didn't want to ever play 78, you can just play the player list this way. See, what happens if I take it all the way down to 16 then? It just disengages entirely at 16. So that's probably 16. Yeah, in fact, when I look at the dots, the 16 dots are standing perfectly still. There's 33. So that's the problem. The problem is this mechanism is not guiding the uh, idler to the right point on the motor spindle. Hey, you know what? We're under power here, too. Let me put full power on. You have to eat all my words now. Well, that picked the speed up slightly, but I can just compensate it back down again with this control. 
So we're set to 45 and it's running at 33 perfectly. Well, maybe we should put a record on it and see what happens here at this point. So I'll turn on the amp. Oh, isn't that neat? The uh, lights here shine down on the controls. That's why there's two lights. There's the buzz. Now I'll turn all the volumes up one at a time here and we'll hear what. Okay. Not bad. Sound the same in every case. Bass and treble, mid range. Gotta throw on a record. Throw on a record. music out there that isn't owned by somebody. Oh, this is this is not the record to play either. Oh not here. Here we are. Sing along with a honky tonk. Nobody cares about this one. Put that on. The volumes are all down again. Doesn't that look terribly wrong, the angle on this thing? That speed control. I'm trying to figure out where this buzz is coming from. I think the buzz could even be my soldering iron here. <laughs> buzz gone. It's my soldering iron. You have, eh? I've been working on the record player. How about that? Isn't that just the worst music you've ever heard? Well, a fantastic record player. Uh, you know, it says something about picking up industrial or commercial quality machines like this. Um, I can only guess this is out of the, phew, I'd say, wow, mid-60s, I'd guess. And here it is, basically still working, simply because it's not consumer-grade machine, it's a commercial-grade machine. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll get on to working on the uh, repair here. <laughs> 